<laughs> hey everybody, Dan Monroe here, Dragon Brush Arts, Art of a Dragon. Hey, I got a really good show for everybody today, so I'm going to get to that right after this. <laughs>
<laughs> wow. Henderson Castle. How cool is that? You know, the Henderson Castle is like a little jewel that we have in Kalamazoo, Michigan. It's so full of history. It's such a beautiful, gorgeous place, man. I love going there every chance I get. And honestly, lately, I've been going there a lot. <laughs> uh, I'm involved with the uh, Go Kalamazoo Ghostbusters, the uh, uh, Southern Michigan Paranormals and things like that. So they have the ghost tour uh, Friday nights. I think it's twice a month that, uh, that we try to do that. So, uh, you know, come up and see us at the ghost tour. You might even see me up there uh, doing some filming and things like that as well. And if you get a chance to go to the Henderson Castle, definitely do that. And let Francois know that I sent you. <laughs> You won't get anything, extra or anything, probably. But, you know, at least he'll know that I sent people up there. <laughs> Welcome to the Big Dog! In my next segment, I was lucky enough to be able to sit down with my old friend and mentor, uh, John McDonald, who was a professor at the Kendall College of Art and Design up in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where I went to school. And it's actually where I met him years and years ago, where I sat in his classroom, and he was teaching uh, uh, illustration uh, techniques and things like that. So, um, you know, I was very lucky to be able to sit down in his home for a few minutes and be able to talk to him. So... Hope you enjoy this next segment. Unfortunately, I'd gone to San Francisco and I thought, oh, it's a great city, great food. Applied at the San Francisco Art Institute and I got in. Um, went out there and I, I didn't even know my colors. I didn't know the names of colors. I, I'd go into the store and go, I didn't care. <clears throat> and I got in and um, we lived in the Tenderloin, which was a rough area. We had roaches everywhere. Um, and uh, there was three of us in a, in a, in a studio <laughs> with no food. One of, them, one of us worked in a, in a restaurant, so he'd bring home food that people didn't finish eating. <laughs> so we had a little food. And I thought, I can't afford this anymore. I can't stand it. I can't afford it. I, it was rough. I got homesick. And uh, I applied for a scholarship. And... Uh, as the most promising student, and I actually got it. And they said, however long you're at the Art Institute, your tuition is taken care of. Oh, wow. Now, what I transferred out there made me, that was my junior year, and I, I would have technically had one more year of undergrad. So I thought, oh, thank God, I don't have to pay any more money. And then they had another thing that said, if uh, you know, a junior could apply for grad school, and I, you won't get in, but you can apply. And uh, fortunately, I applied. My teacher wanted me to apply. I didn't think I'd get in, and I was real bummed. I went home and got sloppy drunk. Um, I had a hangover that I, I could barely stand myself. And I went in the next day, and people were shaking my hand, and I got accepted. So from that point on, I never had to pay a penny for my master's. I never got a bachelor's. I got right into grad school. So it was, it was just, you know, I, how could... Uh, graduated with a master's, moved to Chicago, did illustration work. It was boring. I was in a cubicle. I'd sneak out and go to baseball games, and then moved to LA, worked parking cars. Uh, finally got a job teaching. I did illustrations for people. And then my dad was dying of cancer in Grand Haven, and we moved back here at, at Kendall. They, had, they said, We'd love to hire you. And I thought, Okay. So we moved back, and I've been here since. So that's how my whole, you know, that's. So, John, how, how long have you been a professor here at Kendall? 38 years. 38 years. And uh, I, 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 I had planned on moving back, and uh, after my dad died, I was going to try to get my mom married off so I could take off again. <laughs> but she needed me around, so I, so I stayed and I got hooked on it. And I, I've been to, yeah, it's been 38 years. It's been up and down, but, um, you know, I've been threatened 
refired by teachers. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I would get a show somewhere they were mad. We had a fire in the future. Uh, like that, all that crap going on. So that's a constant, you know, issue. With me. So, can you tell me a little bit about uh, some of the people that you've done portraits of? Oh, I was very, very fortunate. Um, I met a guy named Peter Wiggy through a friend, and um, he was one of the owners of Steel Kings. And uh, uh, this guy said, he said, I, I worked for this guy, I did a job for him, and it, it went longer, and I said, I don't want any more of your money, because I said I would do it. And he said, man, that's really nice of you. And I said, no, give it to the students, buy supplies and stuff. I was a teacher of art, and he said, I got a friend. He said, what did you want to do? What kind of project in mind? I said, yeah, I always wanted to see Russia, because I, when I was in grade school, one of the drawings I did was of the Kremlin. And I said, I'd love to see Russia. You know, I said, I could compare it to Manhattan. And he said, I'll talk to my friend. And I went, yeah, right, you know, come on. And month after month went on. Oh, he's out of town, or he's busy. And I thought, well, there goes that. And then one day he called me and he said, um, Mr. Wiggy wants to talk to you. And I thought, oh, really? So he did. He liked the idea. He funded it. I went to Russia. I went to New York. Did all these paintings. And then he would call me periodically. He said, I'm trying to keep these black kids in school. I want them to understand their history. So he said, you got any ideas? You can do it. I'll, I'll fund it. And I, I did a, a series of famous African Americans. That's where I met Spike Lee, uh, Bernie Shaw, who was a uh, I took my son out. We met an astro a black astronaut, a shuttle pilot, um, let's see who else did that? Taj Mahal, a musician, Alex Haley, um, Barbara Jordan, who was my all-time favorite. So I got to meet these people, take their pictures, and do portraits of them for the series. I, it was just luck, and I, they were all my heroes, you know. And I, I, I just thought Barbara Jordan, the sun rose and set on her. She's wonderful. So I, I did get to meet a lot. Of so, John, <clears throat> what do you think of art today and, and artists that we see out in the world? What, what, what are your ideas? What do you think? Well, I, I'm friends with a few of them on Facebook whom I really respect. There's a guy named Gary Wing, um, uh, Steve Caldwell. These guys are incredible artists. Gary Wing's an amazing artist. And um, uh, Charles, Charles LaRue. I taught Charles. They came up. They're really, really great artists, and uh, I, I look at art now. Um, sometimes I think they're trying to they're trying to work too hard to make a point, and and I'm not so sure they they got the basics down as yet. And uh, I again I think because of the computer art, you know, you can do a drawing and, and you make it perfect. And I think they, we lost a lot based on that alone because they don't really they don't really learn from their failures, you know, because they don't have them. Cleans it up for him, so I, th I think it's a disservice, but I think that's the future, unfortunately. What? Uh, let me readjust this just a little bit. What would you tell an aspiring artist, like a young kid now, coming up yeah. to you and saying, "John, you know, I want to be an artist." What? What? What words of encouragement? What words would you say to me? Well, first off, you already are an artist. Now it's up to you to develop it. And then, um, because I think people feel there's a mystique to it. There's no mystique to it. It's, it's a matter of, um, you, you, if, if you don't have this uh, overall burning desire, um, you can do art, but you probably will never be considered an artist. I, I always tell my students, I would steal from my parents if they were alive to get some stuff to paint if I had to. That's how obsessed I am with it. That's, that's when you know you have to do it. And the world's a better place because we do the art, not because of what we see, what they see, uh, uh, because of what we might do if we didn't do it. You know, you were discussing it. There's no telling what you do if you didn't, weren't allowed to do this. So I would tell them, really uh, look at look at a lot of the old masters. I mean, I, 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 I studied Rembrandt. I love Van Gogh. Um, I love Paul Clay. It doesn't have matter. It doesn't have to be realistic. It doesn't have to be this. Just look at how they did it. Look at how people who were successful did it. And, you know, you can look at a cartoon uh, or an a, a animated drawing. It'll, if it's done well, it'll work. It has nothing to do with, well, that's an abstract. I don't like it. No, if it's done well, that's all you should be concerned about. Yeah. Learn shapes. <clears throat> and 
break eventually, uh, and this happened to me. I was um, I was in grad school in San Francisco, and I was afraid they were going to throw me out because my stuff was too literal. And I thought, man, I this is, I can't. This is not going to make it. And once you got kicked out, you never could get back in. And I was on scholarship, so then I'd have to pay somewhere else, and I couldn't afford that. Um, I stayed up all night. I remember working on a painting, and it flowed. And I took it in when I had to show my work. I always took three in, everybody else's one. And I showed the professor, and he said, Oh, this is good. He said, Why didn't you show me this last time? And I said, I couldn't do it. And he said, If you're... If, if, if you're playing games with us, we're going to throw you out. And I said, no, Al. His name was Al. Like, I'm not playing games. I couldn't do it. I said, all of a sudden, the shapes made sense. And he went, okay, that, that's the truth. Um, and at that point, what happens is, uh, and, and you have to work to that point, where uh, you break your, fa your brain will break everything down into shapes. You never see things for what they are. You see them as shapes, and then they form whatever it is that... So you never really get to enjoy it, like, boy, that's a beautiful building. Your brain is calculating everything about how it looks or how the portrait looks. Once you get there, you can't go back. Yeah. You know, there's a, the, 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 I tell people that, oh, I wish I could get to that point. And anyway, it's not what you think it is. It's a, it's, a, it's a, you know, the Bible speaks of a blessing and a malediction. It's both. So once I understood shapes, then I could draw anything I wanted. And I was like, oh, that's what it was. And it was, so it's all about shapes. So you tell them to keep working and keep working and you'll have a breakthrough. Don't expect to go back to just being able to enjoy something for what it is. You will always analyze everything. Well, the, 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 the thing of it is, is that uh, when I was a kid, my parents, uh, first off they would tell me, you can't do what the white kids do and get away with it. Because they, they do something in school and I do it and I get in trouble. And they, they say, no, 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 you can't do it. And you got to be better than they are. And I don't mean as a, as a human being, you, they want to be, be a good human being, but you've got to work harder just to break even. And, and uh, I truly believe that. I told all my sons the same thing. And, 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 and that really uh, helped my drive, I think. Uh, they, I'm probably a perfectionist in a way, but I, was, I had to be because that's what it took. And I was told by a teacher at Kendall that I would never make money painting black people. And I, I was offended by that. Um, I've been, um, you know, I know they would like to get rid of me at Kendall. As, uh, I'm the only black professor there. I was the only black, uh, there was another guy in, uh, in Detroit, uh, Gil Ashby. We were the only two black uh, chairman of an art program. And, um, the, you know, the staying in Kendall, uh, when I first started there, uh, the white kids would go to the, the dean and ask her, her if uh, they never had a black teacher, if I knew what I was talking about. And things changed when they started winning awards. Um, and now I, we all get along. And I, you know, I, but I will tell them this hasn't been an easy ride. I know I'm not uh, popular because we know we were talking about, uh, and I hate to use this term, but jealousy, because I've had to, I've done more things than most of them. And I've had more successes than most of them. But I never try to throw it in their face. I want all my students to be very successful. I want them to be better than I am. Um, but as a black artist. I don't have the luxury of doing some things. I do now. I can get away with it, but I would always do things that had had um, something that was that dealt with with black pride, so that if a black child saw it, they could say, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah." They could understand it. I, I do landscapes now, but as a as a black artist, it was difficult to just do a landscape when I saw all this stuff going on, you know. So I would do very um, personal things. That dealt with black history. That's beautiful. So, I have some wonderful, awesome, great, just awesome freaking news. I mean, but I can't really tell you. <laughs> so you have to wait. But I, I am going to tell you, I'm going to give you a clue. If you look around in... My surroundings here, uh, there is a major clue to who my, one of my upcoming guests is going to be. Just a huge, huge, it's huge! <laughs> Yo! But I am so happy to, uh, to be able to have this person come on my show. 
and I, it's unbelievable to me that uh, that they're they're allowing themselves to come on my show. <laughs> oh my God! And you know what? If you're an artist, if you're in the art community at all, when I have this guest come on my show, I think that you are going to absolutely freak out just like I am. <laughs> so, look at my surroundings here and uh, you'll get a clue as to uh, who this extremely special guest is. Oh my god! <laughs> Ceiling and pink champagne on ice Another fucking day for you and me in paradise Give me an old school guitar An 8-bit lo-fi porn star I promise that I'll take you to the paradise in hell And so again and again We're playing this game We wanna see our name In the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame I'm playing
guys, that pretty much does it for me today. <laughs> and I just want to say that I thank everybody who has been watching the show, and I thank everybody uh, for your emails and uh, for your support uh, for the show. Not only for uh, watching my show here on the PMN uh, Public Media Network channel 188 in Kalamazoo, Michigan! <laughs> but also uh, when I uh, go ahead and post my show on YouTube as well. And uh, you know, guys, if you are missing my show here, well, you know what? If you're missing my show, you probably won't be able to see the YouTube channel. <laughs> No, uh, address that I'm going to put on the screen here. But, you know. <laughs> Watch the show, and then if you want to see it again, go over to YouTube and watch it on my YouTube channel. And when you go over to my YouTube channel, please do me a favor and uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, ring the bell and do all that nonsense that, that you're supposed to do over there, okay? Because... I'm also trying to build my YouTube channel as well. And I have, of course, the Evil Dragonfire Theater uh, channel, YouTube channel going on. And, of course, I have Captain Wallace and the Evil Dragonfire Theater is coming on this show from time to time as well. And uh, so, you know, and, and you know what? If you live in Michigan, if you live in the Michigan, South Haven, Kalamazoo, Allegan, area. Keep an eye out for Captain Wallace. That's all I'm going to say. He's going to be out and about. So, keep an eye out for him. <laughs> so, until next time, everybody, just like I always say, be good, be good at it, remain true to yourself always. <laughs>